Hey there, welcome to today's episode of On Our Pursuit. I'm excited to introduce you to, or reintroduce you if you've been following my content for a while, to my friend Trayton DeVore. Trayton is the founder of Creator Bread. He's the co-founder of a financial planning firm called All Street Wealth, and he is one of the most creative financial advisors that I know. So I wanted to have a conversation with him talking all things creator economy and creativity. Before we get to kind of the highlights I wanna point out to you, I'd like to ask you to do me a favor. As you're listening, Head to the comments and let Trayton know what it was about this conversation that you really enjoyed. What did he say that motivated you? What is a tactic that you can take and use in your creative journey? Let him know. Give him some feedback so he knows that he's making an impact as he comes on and shares a little bit of his expertise and kind of his story as well. So there's a few things I wanted to point out and uh, direct you to as you're listening to this conversation. First, I want you to pay attention to Trayton's creative process. I think for those of us that are creators or maybe struggling to find our creative process, it is beneficial to hear what other people are doing. It doesn't mean you need to recreate what Trayton or myself is doing, but use those as starting points to get you started on your creative process. So pay attention to the part of the conversation about our creative processes. The second, we have a nice little conversation about the difference between a creative and a creator. Uh, We have definitions that are a little different but similar, and I think we end up coming up with something that makes a little sense, at least in my mind. So pay attention to what we say, and I think the difference between a creative and a creator is, and if you have a definition, throw that in the comments as well, and we can add that to the mix. And finally, I want you to pay attention to how he's using Creator Bread to help creators plan for their financials, whether it be for their business, for their personal life, whatever it may be. There are tons of resources over at Creator Bread, and I want to make sure you pay attention to that part of the conversation as well. And finally, and maybe most importantly, I want to drive attention to Peer Tree plans or Peer Tree offers. Peer Tree is another one of Trayton's brand, and they have created a grant program for creators over through Peer Tree. And in this episode, I will announce in an episode, but I'll announce it here as well. I am matching up to $500, dollar for dollar, of contributions to Peer Tree Planning that will be able to give a grant to a creator to be able to pursue their creative um, interests. We talked about the first grant check that was given out. It's a really cool scenario, and I really want to try to get more money and help him reach his goal of $5,000 for 2023. So if we can get him 20% of the way there, I consider that a success. So with that, I will let you get to this episode with Trayton DeVore. Remember those three things. Remember to leave him a comment. And while you're there, go ahead and subscribe uh, to make sure you don't miss any of the upcoming episodes. With that, enjoy the episode, and we'll see you later. We are one of the few creative financial advisors that are out there. There's more that are, that are popping up, but I think that most financial advisors don't consider themselves creative. And I'm almost moving towards the, the, the framework of I'm a creative who happens to be a financial advisor. And probably six months ago, I would have told you I'm a financial advisor who's creative. And, and there is a difference in that shift of perspective in the way you think about it. But um, we were just talking offline about whether or not you've always been um, a creator, been creative. So uh, break that back down again of, of like whether or not like this creativity that you have with what you did with Peer Tree Planning and now All Street and then the things you're doing with the website design and, and Creator Bread, like have you always been as creative as you are today and has it been such a focal point of what it is that you're doing day to day? Yeah, I would say like, I mean, I definitely grew up creative. Like I I took a lot of art classes. I did photography, but like I just never really considered it a career um, because I excelled in sports and academics. So that was taking up a lot of my time growing up. Like we'd have morning waits before school, then go to school, have practice afterwards. And then I'd either have to finish my homework or play video games. Like spending time on creativity wasn't really a priority for me. It was just something that I enjoyed doing. So like growing up, I remember um, an art class that I loved so much. Like I would spend months like working on big pieces of drawing. Um, And then like I would take a woodworking class and I built like a clock, um, a table um, and that sort of stuff's just like all over like my family's houses. Like when I go to my grandparents for Christmas, I can see like this little card holder I made for their playing cards there. Um, Then like when I go home, there's just like all sorts of stuff I made everywhere. Um, but at the time, like it, it just never felt like a priority and never felt like something that you could like build a career around. Um, cause I always thought creatives were like 
like the Rihanna, the Kanye, just like all the like big superstars. And I never really knew of any smaller creators or creatives or anything. Um, so my whole life, I just pictured myself like I'm either going to get just a real world job and just do fine with that and live a normal life. Or if I like put enough effort and focus into it, like I might be able to play professionally and maybe baseball or something. Um, and I ended up playing college baseball. Like I did good in school and college. Um, but like my nine to five job after college just never really connected with me. Like I didn't like it at all. Um, so when I started the business, like 50% of it, like you were talking with the advisor stuff, like I would say it was almost like 60%. The creativity is why I wanted to start the business. And it was like 40% wanting to be an advisor. Um, Cause I knew um, just kind of like through those years of college and stuff, like I liked working on things on the side. And when I worked that nine to five job, I was like trying to build the business in the background on the side. Um, so then when I had all the time to do that and just dedicate myself to it after I quit my job, it was like, oh, yeah, this is what I was actually meant to be doing. And it didn't feel like that at the time because um, it was really hard to get started and I wasn't making money for a long time. So it definitely didn't feel like the right decision at the time. But within probably I'd say like the past six months, I've gotten a lot more confident with it, almost like in the same position as you is like. I almost like define myself as a creative now. And then I use that to try and like excel in a different area, like with the financial planning firm or with the blog, like I'm taking my creativity and implementing it into a business. I'm going to circle back to kind of like being creative when we're younger and kind of this belief that I have, but I want to, I want to see your take on thing. And I think we've talked about this before offline in previous conversations, but creator versus creative, like, I think I both can be nouns. So when we think about it from a noun standpoint, is there a, in your mind is there a difference between creator and creative, and how do you use it? And I used to struggle with it, but now I have now I have a clear definition between the two, and I'll share that after yours. But kind of how do you use creator versus creative when you're talking about an individual? Yeah, and I re I wish I could remember what the last answer is because I don't think it's even going to be the same as what it was that's, last. That's time. perfect. Like, so that's one of the cool things about being a <laughs> creator and i'll share mine again is that like as you continue to create like you evolve so it's really cool as you create you can look back and see your evolution and your growth of your thoughts or your practice or your craft so it's perfectly okay if your definition you're about to give now is different than before because things have changed and you've learned more of the experience more that gives you a new updated definition yeah and right now i would say creative is in the noun sense almost like you're still trying to figure it out like you have creative aspects of yourself and like a creative personality and you can like put out creative stuff um but then like because i struggled to call myself either but then creator in my head felt like you're defining yourself as that not in a bad way but it's like you're the creator of something you have a body of work or a product or a brand or something that you were the creator of. Cause I wouldn't say I'm the creative of something. Mm -hmm. Um, but like if I'm confident in something that I made, I want to like claim myself as the creator of that. Um, but then in another sense, like a lot of people just consider YouTubers, like those are creators. And then like, if you're writing, you're a writer. And I think that gets pretty murky and like, I don't think that part really matters. Um, mm -hmm. But to me, it's kind of like creative is like when you're doing a lot of it and still trying to figure it out. And then creator is like when you can confidently define yourself as like, I made this thing. I, th I think my definition is similar. It's, it's close. Um, so the, uh, I, start break I start breaking down the, the two going on the verb sense. I think we are all creative. And I think mm -hmm. we'll hit that on this when we go back to when we were younger. But I think we're all born to create. And so we all are creative which would mean we are all creatives. Um, and then I, I think that I got influenced by, I'm listening, I'm well, listening and reading to Questlove's uh, Creative Quest. Mm -hmm. It's an awesome book. And if you haven't read it, I would encourage you. But I also, I'm not a big audio book guy, but I would almost encourage you to listen to it as well because Questlove narrates it. Oh, and man. there's like music and stuff in it as well. So it's really, really, really well done. Um, but in it, he talks about, I forget how he frames it, but it really connected with me is that you move from a creative to a creator when you put something out. So like, and, and like the way that. I define it is, 
if you're creating for yourself, which is what I think we should initially do, then you're still just a creative. But once you put something out for the world to see, then you've become a creator, which I think ties into yours. You've created something, but I think mm. like the transition is you share it with the world. Um, I like that. My definition isn't that you have to make money on it. Um, like I don't think that the business side of creating makes you a creator. I think it's just creating something to share with the world, taking your gifts and putting it where people can see. Um, and that's when you transition to a creator. So I think all creators are creatives, but not mm -hmm. all creatives are creators. It's once you put something out, then you become a creator. Um, this is kind of how I've broken it down. And I really like that, which I hope I like it since it's kind of my definition as of today. We'll see if it evolves, but that's how I've been able to, because I used to use them interchangeably and now I'm more intentional about how I use those two nouns. Yeah, and I still give myself problems with it, mostly just because the brand is called Creator Bread, mm -hmm. and and I still kind of like brand it around like self-employed creatives. Mm -hmm. So there's like that issue right there on the front side of it, and because I'm I I don't know, I'm still just trying to figure out like how people claim themselves as well. Because like my belief isn't going to be the same as someone else's, so mm -hmm. that's also why I use them interchangeably. Because I'm like. Mm -hmm you don't have to be a YouTuber or call yourself a creator to like benefit from this stuff. Mm -hmm. It's like, if you are self-employed and you have creativity and you're like using that in your business and like, that's your way of life, then that kind of applies to you. So I'm still like trying to figure that out myself as well. Well, I mean, for, for my definition, not that my definition's right. I think creator bread's perfect because Oh, that's true. I would assume that most of the people who are, you know, following creator bread and, and, and in your ecosystem, are sharing their work. Like they're trying to make their business centered around their creative interests. So they have produced something that would make them a creator. So I think the, I like, like from that. my definition, you're, it, it's on point and it, it's perfect. And I think you can, I mean, in your world, I think you could use them interchangeably. Cause again, going back to, I think every creator is a creative and mm -hmm. not the other way around. Most yeah. creator bred people are going to be creating something cause that's what they're trying to build. Um, and even to the point, if their business, if the business itself is not, you know, stereotypical creative business, like go, go, your, uh, go to All Street. Like the way that you guys right. market is creative. So yeah. like you are creating new ways, you're creating templates and all these other things. So like, I think that you don't have to be an artist or musician or YouTube or whatever to be a creator in your business. You could be anything as long as you take this creative expression that you have inside of you to market and sell your business or the way that you create the client experience like this. That's, that's what I want people to get away from conversations like this is there's more than one way to be creative. There's more than one way to transition to be a creator and that it doesn't have to be art and music and photography. Like you can, there's tons of different ways to bring creativity to even a nine to five job. You think right. about like boring workflows within an ecosystem of a firm. If you shake those things up and make it a different way of doing things that brings new energy to the process, like that's creative. Like that's bringing creativity to a, what would be a stereotypical, you know, boring job that would not be considered creative. You can, you can still do that. Yeah. And that's, that's one thing I kind of noticed at that job coming out of college. So like I graduated in 2018, worked there for two years and started the business and quit that job in 2020. Um, was like, there was just so many things, which I had never worked like a professional job in that kind of setting before. Like there was 500 employees, like it was a billion dollar company. Um, and it was in transportation. So like our job, my job was taking trucking companies from a different company, bringing them to us and then like clearing out all their old invoices, collecting on their accounts receivables um, and just making sure their like books are clean. Um, and no one was like keeping track of the data or anything. Like how quick are we closing these accounts? Like we're losing a lot of money here the longer these take to close. Um, so I built like a whole Google sheet, all this sort of stuff to track all this sort of data for these multi-million dollar companies. Um, and I was just using it for myself to know, like, is our team moving in the right direction or do we need to change something here? And no one was telling me to do any of this stuff. Like, it just felt like the right thing to be doing. Um, and no one in the company and this company existed for 25 years. No one had ever tracked this stuff before. No one had ever created anything like this before. Um, and I presented it like to my supervisor. I'm like, hey, we have like all these issues here and if we reduce like the days or whatever by this amount, like this is going to save multiple seven figures here. And they were just like mind blown by this. And then that spreadsheet, like 
started like going to every single team in the company and every single team started doing like <clears throat> something similar to that. And it was just really cool. And I didn't notice it at the time, but that was kind of like a creative solution mm -hmm. inside a business. And I hadn't even thought about it at the time. But now when you said that um, in that previous statement, I was like, oh yeah, like that, that was something in that job that really stood out to me. Yeah. Ideas can be just as creative as a piece of art um, and mm -hmm. just as impactful. So that. I, I think that the, the the inner creator that we have and our creativity is a, is a good guide for us as we go in our pursuit, and it can lead us down different paths. Um, so you know, you mentioned early on you were creative when you were younger, art, creating things, building clocks, all that type of stuff. Um, I think a lot of us lose touch with our inner creator when we get into schooling. Um, you know, we still had art class. Even, even through high school, you had to take some arts and different things. But the focus mm -hmm. became, for me as well, sports and school. And my interest in art kind of dwindled. And then you get into the professional world. And I think today mm -hmm. it's more common and to see people trying to create because the creator economy is really big and social media puts it out there. But when I was starting my career, there was none of that. Um, and it wasn't until maybe almost eight years ago when I started my firm that I started to tap back into it with writing. And then mm -hmm. I just really enjoyed it and I just started experimenting and following. And that's where I think that the whole idea of the pursuit was developed over those eight years was I was just listening to my passions and following and basically cre my creative interests were where my passions were and just kind of guided me. All right, by now you should have known a commercial was coming midway through this episode. So here we are, meditation. Meditation has been very impactful on my pursuit. It's helped me align my spirit, mind, body, and eventually money. And I wanted to do a little bit to help you with your uh, meditative journey. I created a five guided meditation for free that you can download over at pursuit.co. That's P-R-S-T.co. You head up to the shop, click on the downloads, and you'll be able to get the five episodes for free. I don't even ask you for your email. Um, I don't know how many people have actually listened to them. I know that at least 50 have downloaded, which is pretty cool. So there are five episodes or five meditations. The first one's on, uh, on your authentic life. The second is on spirit. The third is on mind. The fourth is on body. And the final one, you guessed it, is on money. All of these are designed to help you begin to connect those and move towards finding your authentic life. They're 10 to 15 minutes long, just a guided meditation to help you get going. So you can download those again, pursuit.co, prst.co, up at the shop, you'll see the downloads there. Grab those and get on the way with your meditative process. With that, let's get back to this conversation with Trayton. Thinking about your like your day-to-day -day just life and, and happiness and fulfillment, like how much is attributed to your ability to be creative? Um, I would say a vast majority of it because I just know, which was a nice thing about like taking that nine to five job out of school is I've seen what that life was like and what that day to day looks like. And I've worked, I mean, I was a plumber. I worked at KFC. I was a bank teller. I worked like a pretty professional job. Like I've tried a lot of things and none of that was really like bringing any sort of satisfaction, like plumbing was by far the most enjoyable thing, which was still kind of weird to me. I don't know why I like that. Um, and it could be like, there was a lot of creative solutions. Like you show up to the job and there's no like one right way to do this one thing. Like you have all these parts in your truck and all these like different variables from like the year the house was built to the year, all the stuff, like there's a lot of stuff that goes into it. And I kind of like that. Um, but as far as like, now knowing like I didn't like any of those like nine to five jobs where I didn't have any creativity as soon as I transitioned into having all the creative freedom I could imagine it was just like the biggest biggest mindset shift right there like I could put out anything into the world that I wanted to like that was compliant of course um but it was it was just nice because it felt like I had something to say at the time like I saw the financial education issues so it was like my main goal when I first started was to share a lot of financial education. So all my initial writing was about that. All my videos were about that. Every piece of content that I created was about like my message. And I think that's one big thing and probably something that stops a lot of people from creating is maybe like feeling like they don't have anything to say. Um, and that's something I still still struggle with because I can't or I don't always do it, like create just pure 
out of like pure enjoyment. Like there usually has to be some reason for me to make something to want to do it. And I think like, even with that, having something to say, like, rappers sometimes like when they release their first album that thing could kill it because they're telling like their whole life story they've never got to put out all these messages like in a little like compiled album before and then now that they've said all those things they might not have really much left to say so they kind of fall off um and that's that's something i struggle with is like i i still can't just like create to create like i i have to have a reason behind it um and then like my day to day um as far as like kind of like my creative process, like time blocking is by far the biggest thing. Like if I don't time block, nothing gets done. Mm-hmm. Um, and having just a dedicated, even if it's 15 minutes, which it's for me, it's never that long or it's never that short because I prioritize it. Um, but like I have usually at least three hours of just dedicated creative time to work on whatever I'm doing. Um, but I think, I hope that kind of answers the question. I forgot what it was. Yeah, no, no that, hey, this is a creative conversation. <laughs> We're just flowing where it goes. Um, but yeah, like the creative process for me took a long time and I, I don't have a structured one. Um, I, I tried the time block. I, I've tried everything. And like the way my creativity works is like I get inspired by an idea and then it takes me no time. But to just sit down and try to force something, like that's mm-hmm. never worked for me. And I don't think like I, I've written about it and talked about it a bunch. I don't think the world works in absolutes. I think everybody has a different way that their creative process could be. So for some people, it is I'm just going to write for an hour every day, no matter what, and eventually something will come from it. Like I know there's authors that that's the way they write their books. They just sit down every day, they write for an hour, they don't care what they write, they just have to keep on writing, and then they go back and clean things up. And if you do that consistently, consistently, sometimes themes come up. Mm-hmm. That just never worked for me. But I. You know, Pursuit talks about connecting spirit, mind, body, and money. Over the last year, connecting to the kind of my spirituality more has connected me more to nature and other, and the creative process has become a lot easier. And again, there's mm-hmm. no right way for spirituality to come into play, but I think that it is. And I did a drawing the other day that really represents, at least with one of my creations, so I, I'm doing these daily notes. And I have a bigger plan for them, but every day I write down something that has to be related to spirit, mind, body, or money, or creativity. I don't know what it's going to be. I have a list of ideas, but I, I literally every day sit down, and at some point right before I sit down, the idea comes to me. And it's almost yeah. like now, when it comes to the daily notes, I'm not even actually creating anything. I'm receiving. And it sounds mm-hmm. crazy, but Rick Rubin's book, um, he talks about the source, so I did this drawing that is like basically the source floating over me and it's shooting down these ideas and I'm just the translator. So these mm-hmm. ideas come into me and it's the easiest content I've ever created and I feel like it's the best as well and it doesn't take a lot of work because I'm not forcing it. I'm just letting the ideas come to me but I don't think I ever get to that point if it wasn't all of the years of creating and, and writing and trying different things and videos and podcasting and then like finally tapping into to the source, if you will, if you want to call it that, yeah. to just receive these messages and not force it. Um, but it took a long, long time to get there. So, you know, I sometimes I start my daily note the night before and I clean it up in the morning. Some mornings I just, or some nights I just put down some notes and then in the morning when Leo's getting ready, I write it real quick. Uh, but it's, yes. I now I have a time that I do, but it's not structured. It's not on my calendar. It's just that that's when that happens. And I'm like 40... I think 45 days in a row, which for me, I've never written that consistently. Um, That's so awesome. it's pretty cool once you tap into that. Um, so I, like, I think somewhere along the line of finding your creative process, you have to relinquish the control and trying to force it and just allow it to happen, um, which is really weird to kind of tell somebody, just let it happen. But I think eventually it does. And it becomes a lot easier. Yeah. And I think you made a good point with um, almost just like flexing your creative muscle. Like when you first start, that thing that you're working on isn't going to be the thing that you're working on forever. Because when I first started writing, it was for this one certain blog for like Peer Tree. And then that evolved into something else. And I was doing um, 
two minute Tuesdays for, I think it was like a year and a half mm -hmm. every week, every Tuesday, I would publish these videos and I'm not doing it anymore, but I never would have gotten good at video if I didn't just commit to publishing this weekly thing. Mm -hmm. It was quick, two minutes recorded on my phone for like the first year and then transitioned into my camera. Um, but just like knowing that whatever creative like output that you're doing at the time, like that doesn't necessarily have to be the end goal. Like it can evolve into something else. Cause then those videos that led me to doing my first brand deal to create financial education content for someone else. Mm -hmm. And then that transitioned into something else. And then like nothing that I'm doing now was what I was doing a year and a half, two years ago. And that that's just hard for me to like wrap my head around. The, the creative process is more than just like your routine for creating. It's what you mm -hmm. just described. It's the getting started and evolving and growing and learning and experimenting. And, you know, everything that you're creating today is to make you a better communicator and creator tomorrow and, and so forth. So, yeah, yeah you, you, you've got to just put it out there and you've got to make that transition from creative to creator <clears throat> to, to begin to make that process. And that's all a part of the process. Um, yeah. You should expect your work to only get better. But I think that... The work gets better, but I also think you be you begin to find your way as you continue to create. Um, you know, in our profession as advisors, there's a lot of conversation about having a niche, and you know, mm. I never had a niche, um, but if I were to start a new firm over today, I would ha I would have a niche, and it's all yep. centered around this connecting spirit, mind, body, and money. I don't think I ever get to that specific thing or this concept of an authentic life that that's all I want to write about and what I want to become known for. Like if you hear somebody mention spirit, mind, body, and money, I want you to think of me. If somebody happens to mention authentic life, I want you to think of me. Um, yeah. Kind of like that I'm getting all these text messages when people see bald eagles now because like they think of me when they see like bald eagles. Like that's what I want. But I don't get there without all the creating because all of the writing and creating and reading and experimenting is how I stumbled across this connection that now I want to write about. So – the process is bigger than when do you sit down and write and how do you write. It's the whole, it's the whole picture. It's the years of creating as a part of the process as well. Yeah, and one one hard thing because when you said um, like the more you create, the more you just kind of figure it out as you go. Um, one thing, one quote that's kind of stood out to me from Colin and Samir is that burnout is like creative output without direction. Mm -hmm. And when you're first getting started you're not really going to know which direction that you're working in and you can like experience burnout pretty quick when you're like just putting all this effort into it and nothing's really happening. Like it's not really making sense. Um, so I think for like new creatives, that's a, that's a hard thing to deal with because mm -hmm. unless you're just like super passionate and you just love it and you don't care about any sort of result, like you probably won't really experience it. But if you're trying to like build something with it at the same time, that's that's one thing that I've struggled with and I, I don't have a solution for it. But just the idea of like creative output without direction is what leads to burnout has mm -hmm. helped me like try and avoid it at least. What's your thought on creating for yourself first? Um, I I've gone back and forth with that at the moment. I don't like it um, just because and I guess it also kind of depends on the context, but mm -hmm. For example, when I write my newsletter or I'm writing a blog, I'm picturing one person in mind and I'm not writing for myself because I already know this. Like mm -hmm. I'm writing for this one person in this one situation. And if it connects with other people, great. But I know that this person is going to find value in it. And I know there's more than one of these people out there. Mm -hmm. um, so in a lot of things that I do, like I don't take that approach at all. And I kind of struggle to wrap my head around it sometimes, but there's also the flip side where creator bread and none of this stuff would have existed if I didn't create for myself in the first place. Damn you. Uh, damn you. That was where I was going to go. That is exactly where I was going to go. I was going to say, well, <laughs> today you don't create for you, but go back to when you got started. And that's exactly where I was going to go. Creating for yourself first helps you find your way. The beginning creator, you don't know where you're going to go. You know, create for yourself and then, you know, kind of let your audience and your tribe find you. And then when you begin to understand more of, of what their needs are, then you can start to yeah. create for them. So, like, I promise everybody that was not a setup. Like, if you go watch YouTube and watch my face, my face light up and me rudely interrupt my guest because it's exactly where I was going to go. So, I think that's so true that 
eventually, same thing, like the daily notes. I started creating those for myself and only the, even though I'm only 45 minutes or 45 days into it, like while I'm not forcing it, I do know a little bit more of where I want this thing to go, which I think shapes the messages that I'm receiving to translate. So I think that that's, if, you, if all else fails, if you don't know what you want to create or who you want to create for, create for yourself and just keep on doing that. And I think the nice thing about that too is if you create for yourself, then the vanity metrics don't matter as much. And yeah. I think a lot of people get hung up on how many people are downloading, how many, like if you're writing for yourself or, or recording for yourself, whatever it might be, who cares? Um, like mm -hmm. that's not why you're doing it. You're doing it to express yourself first and create to make yourself happy. And then with time, I think that, you know, then you can pay a little bit more attention to the metrics and things of that sort. But to me, like, I don't care what rate the daily notes, uh, daily subscribers get because that's not yeah. why I'm doing it yet. Now in the future, I might care, but for now I'm doing this for myself. It's awesome that people like it, but you know, that's not the mindset for it. Yeah. And cause now that I thought about it while you were talking, like almost everything that I've started was kind of based around like a problem that I've experienced myself. So like Peer Tree Planning, the financial planning firm was financial education and financial advice for our generation because no one was doing it. But I kind of saw at the same time, I was like, man, this would be nice for myself. Like if I didn't know this stuff, I would like someone to provide this service for me. Um, and then it kind of the second thing was like the freelance, um, like writing and design stuff. And that never really was like for myself, like I had to teach myself web design and I had to write for myself. And then other people saw that and then hired me off of it. So that was kind of interesting. But then like with the nonprofit, um, the original idea, which I, 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 I meant to send it to you. Like I have an email draft back from 2021 about nonprofit questions because mm -hmm. the original idea was to figure out how to just make therapy more accessible, like either just cover the cost of like outstanding invoices or whatever, like people who couldn't afford therapy or kind of like a grant program to just get them into therapy and not have to pay for it. Um, but, and, and that was like from my own problem. Like I struggled a lot when I started the business and I started it by myself and I went to like two sessions of hypnotherapy and it was great, but I couldn't afford it going forward. Mm -hmm. um, so I was like, I know how good this was and I know how bad it is when I didn't have it. So if I can help other like solo creatives, like now I know that niche, but like at the time I was like, if I can help other entrepreneurs or people just trying to take this leap, avoid like the mental health problems that I was going through, like that's what I want to do. And then with the grant program now, it's like, I completely understand how hard it is to try and start a business. And I know the financial pressure on the creative process. And I know that like our society just doesn't let people like take a six month sabbatical to try and make something creative or whatever it is. Um, and I, I solved that problem for myself by just saving money for two years and living on an extremely small budget. And I know that's not possible for everyone's situation. So I wanted to create something to give someone that, that like financial flexibility to be able to be creative in whatever aspect they want to be. Um, so yeah, like everything started as kind of like creating for myself and like solving a problem that I wish was solved. And then I have to, after it's established, then you kind of have to create for the other people to get them into your mission or your vision or whatever you're trying to do. Mm -hmm. So I guess, I guess that's kind of how I think about it now. Well, let's talk about creator bread a little bit more because we've touched on that and we're going to hit the, uh, the grant program at the very end. But, um, so creator bread was, is another one of your brands and your ventures is obviously designed for creators. Um, you know, let people, especially the creators listening, you know, know a little bit more about what the brand is, what the, the goal is. And I want to talk about some of the things you're seeing from the creator bread community that's working for creative. So, um, tell us about creator bread. Yeah. So the whole like purpose of creator bread is really just to make like money in business more approachable as a self-employed creative. Um, so I'm doing everything from like writing like how to blogs, like how to open your first investment account, how to build an investment portfolio, like all the stuff that you need to know about personal finance when you're self-employed. Um, I just write from like a perspective of someone who's a self-employed creative because there's just so many blogs out there that apply to really not anyone because they'll talk about like, oh, your salary or oh, the stuff from your 401k, like. 
I just don't talk about any of this stuff because if someone works a nine to five and they come across this, like none of that stuff's really going to apply to them unless they're thinking about taking the leap into self-employment. And then this whole website is essentially built for them. Um, but the main thing is definitely like the blogs and the newsletter. Like I, I'm just kind of a writer at heart that I found. Um, so all my content kind of leads, um, leads the, the written way. Um, and then like I do a weekly sketch, um, it's called the breadheads and it's just like a, let's, let's get this bread to kind of like not, not combat, but just like the opposite of the starving artist. It's like, we can go out there, make money. Like let's, let's get this bread. Like let's build a business and not be a starving artist. And then the starving artist kind of came, I don't even really know how I thought of it, but I was like, it plays so well into bread. I was like, this has to be like the signature design of creator bread. So it's kind of like the little character, the bread heads, the starving artist design. And then um, I started a shop like a few months ago where um, it just has like the starving artist design and then all the profits go to the grant program. Um, but yeah, it's just essentially like a little kind of like a publication brand sort of thing where I'm just making all sorts of content to make money and business more approachable because I think a lot of people can make a career from being creative and it's not even necessarily like having all these followers and you're selling a course or you're doing all this stuff. It could just be you're a good video editor for four YouTubers and you're making 5,000 a month. Like it doesn't have to be anything crazy. And I just want to make that known that it's like you, I, I want to have the education for like when you're ready to make that commitment, which is more of like on your side, like getting them to that point. And it's like, here, here's the education. Here's when you get started, when you open your LLC, whatever, here's the banks I would recommend. Here's the accounts you should have. Here's how all this stuff should be set up. And then I just don't think there's really any content like that on the internet specifically for that one niche. And like you with the bald eagle stuff, like on Twitter, um, Jordan Taylor, he like took a picture of bread. Like I'm guessing it was like him and his girlfriend or his wife, like out for dinner or something. And I just thought that was super cool that like, I'm just trying to build a brand around like the bread thing mm -hmm. and it's starting, starting to work a little bit. It's uh, one of the things I think is really hard uh, of maintaining that balance of just letting the creating happen versus being smart and intentional to try to build something bigger. So it's like, at least for me, I feel like if I try to focus too much, like if, if I was in your shoes trying to make the bread something bigger than what it is right now, and that was my intention and it was being forced, I think it would be, it would work against <clears throat> me. Um, mm -hmm. But at the same point, like once it starts to get some traction, like how do I be a little intentional and strategic to m help it grow faster. Like you can't just always create without any intention, but you also can't make the intention all about trying to grow this thing. And like, I think you've got to let it just naturally happen and then apply force whenever you can, which I think is sometimes tough to do. It's, yeah. And I mean, I struggled with that because I wanted to kind of like monetize creator bread. Like I wanted to get a lot of subscribers to the newsletter and then get one exclusive sponsor for it. Cause I still didn't want it to be like just an affiliate website and just shilling all sorts of stuff. Like I wanted the one partner that I use every single day in my business mm -hmm. to sponsor that thing. Um, and cause I started, so creator bread started back in September, 2021. Um, and probably like six months in, like nothing really crazy was happening. Like there wasn't much website traffic. I had like a hundred subscribers on the newsletter. I'm like, I don't know how much I really enjoy this at the moment, but it was only because I was tying like the financial success to it. When I looked at it from like a real standpoint, I'm like, this is really all I want to be doing for the rest of my life. The only reason it's frustrating right now is because I want to make money from it and I'm not, and I'm trying to do everything to get more subscribers, but I hate like all this growth hacking stuff. So it was just like very, very frustrating. Mm -hmm. um, but then when I realized that I wasn't really trying to make money with, like I just wasn't really interested in that part of it. And I started making money elsewhere, like primarily through the web design stuff that just made the creative part of creator bread for me way easier. So I'm like, yeah, like, if I post this newsletter and 500 people unsubscribe from it, like, yeah, that would suck, but I'm still going to send the next one next Saturday. And that changes nothing for like what I'm trying to make and the message I'm trying to put out there. Um, so when I like disconnected 
like the the numbers and the analytics and stuff from me wanting to do it is when I like truly started wanting to do it. And I think the content started getting better because I wasn't putting any pressure on it. It It's like, this is what I want to be doing. I don't care if it makes money. I'm like supporting myself elsewhere for now. So I'm just going to enjoy this and post whatever I want to with it. And and that highlights why this is not as easy as it like it sounds like, oh, just like just create to create like it's you've got to find that balance and eventually you've got to figure out how to monetize it. Um, But I think that like figuring out the monetization maybe comes a little bit later. You know, everybody wants to be monetizing on day one and it's like it's the overnight success that took 10 years to build. So you've got to do all of that creating and I think that. Your content is always going to be better, as you describe, when you're doing it out of passion. You're doing it because you love it, not because you need to, to grow your subscribers. And you do that long enough, then I think good things happen. And then that's when you have to flip the switch and say, okay, here's how I monetize. But you look at someone like Jack Butcher, and like I think that's a great game plan of give, 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 build your audience – and then listen to your audience and find out what they need and then begin to build to their needs. And if you can build a big enough, I mean, he just, it's, he prints money, like yeah. whether it be an NFT project or, all right, you know, I don't think he necessarily does this, but like, you know, it'd be nice to make an extra 10 grand. Like, all right, let's just put out a sweatshirt and then my audience is just going to go buy it up. And in two days I made yeah. the money, but it took him a long time to get there. And while he was doing it, I don't think he was doing it with the intent of like, this is going to yield the money down the road. This is what I want to do. I enjoy this. And and down the road, it's going to lead to good things. So, you know, doing this creator stuff is not, it's not easy. Um, Above and beyond. And I think, yeah, I think the people who like try and go into it with like, oh, I'm going to post this much on TikTok and YouTube, and I'm going to have this offer and whatever right away. Like, I don't think that works at all because all the viewers now no, they can like sense the inauthenticity mm-hmm. there and it's just not going to work. And then those people just kind of like um, falter off. But kind of like you were saying with um, Jack Butcher, I never had any sort of plans for the breadhead sketches or whatever. I just I don't even really know how I came up with it. Um, but Trent on Twitter um, a couple weeks ago, he mentioned something about like would anyone be interested in having like a children's book series created with the breadheads characters around like just basic personal finance for kids? And I mean like that had kind of been in the back of my head. Like I want to build like these characters up over Mm -hmm. time, but just knowing that someone else saw that and that wasn't like the intention of posting these things every Monday was really cool to just see that if you do something and like put out something that you like, other people are also going to see it if you're showing like excitement in it and you're consistent with it and you're like just doing it. Like other people are going to start to notice over time and you, you also can't get tired before other people get interested. Mm -hmm. Like if I would have stopped creator bread six months in when I was like, Oh, this isn't really working. Like none of it would be happening right Mm -hmm. now. So just got to keep going. Yeah, a lot of a lot of creators give up. I think what is it to be in the top one percent of podcasts? You just have to have three episodes. Yeah, it's like, which insane. Is, I, I'm a top one percent <laughs> podcaster, which is which is bonkers. Um, but yeah, so I, I, the good and again, if you never shared the bread, then you know it would never have grown to where it is now or where it's going to be. And I do I do believe that like some of the best things just come from a passion and an idea with no intent behind it. Um, I, mm-hmm. Not to say you can't you can't like manufacture something to be successful. I just think it's I think it's harder, and I think when you're manufacturing is when you hit that burnout because you're manufacturing mm-hmm. expecting to see things. Where if you're like I just really want to do this and I don't care if it takes off, I just enjoy it. That, that like that energy attracts a different way than the manufactured. So again, no absolutes, but I think that just the creating to create because you love it is a great way to get started. And I also think it's, it lends itself to building this on the side. Like I want to, mm-hmm. I would love for everybody to express their passion as their career. Um, that's not necessarily the right case for everybody, but I also don't think it's like, just you want to do something, quit what you're doing today to go all in on this thing. I think it's, you do it on the side and slowly build it up. And then you get to a point you're like, okay, like, I can make some sacrifices and changes. This thing's got some momentum and it can become it. And then you just build it on the side. And again, that way, as you're building on the side, there's no pressure to it. It's all just yeah. creating out of passion. And that 
I think is the best recipe if you can play the long game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I wouldn't recommend unless you have just a lot of savings or like a spouse that can support it and like cover insurance costs and all that sort of stuff. I would not recommend taking the leap without any sort of plan um, just because from my experience, like, like you were saying, financial pressure hurts the creative process more than anything. Mm -hmm. Like you will get burnt out. You'll take shortcuts. You'll make the wrong decisions if you're trying to chase the next dollar to support yourself. Mm -hmm. And like what I found was like, I kind of started to resent some of the creative stuff that I was doing because I was like, I need to do this to pay my rent next month. And it, then it just kind of just felt like a task and it wasn't, creative at all. It was putting 1200 words on a piece of paper and submitting it and hoping that I didn't get it torn apart. Like mm -hmm. it wasn't, it wasn't necessarily fun at that point. Um, so, so yeah, having, having like something behind you, like financial backing or having tangible success that you can quit and just transition makes that way, way easier and just more approachable as well. And that's one thing with working with an advisor like you or, or somebody who specializes in working with creators is you know, also figuring out what do you need this creative venture to bring and then having a, yeah. a conversation about, you know, how much do you really need to be happy? If you're in a job making a lot of money that you're unhappy, could you have a better quality of life making less money doing something that you are fully passionate about? And kind of that's where the whole life planning comes into um, to yeah. all of this and kind of connecting the money to this stuff. It's like, all right, you've got this thing. You're unhappy. This is what you really want to do. You've been doing it for a couple of years or some traction there. You could go do this, but you're going to make less money as you continue to build. Does that work? Is that something you're willing to do? And how does that play out from a financial planning standpoint? I think it's hard to do it just wondering, which is where – I do think financial planning is really important in all this, but it's mm -hmm. not traditional financial planning. It's not retirement planning. It's not college planning. It's, you know, how do you plan to understand what you value the most and what do you need to support that so you can go do this thing that you're more passionate about and then start to figure out where do you need to get the monetization to be to continue to hit those longer term goals? Yeah. And like on the financial advisor standpoint, like I can't even... I struggle to work with just normal W2 couple. They might have a kid, maybe not, but just if they're not like trying to pursue something, like I struggle to connect and like have conversations. Like, what are we even talking about if we have this much money here and it's just not really being used? Or if it's like you make this much money and you're still living paycheck to paycheck, like, I I personally, where I'm at right now, struggle to want to focus my time and effort on that. Mm -hmm. And I'd rather focus my time and effort on the people who like want to do it and they're going after something and they just need a little help planning to make all that stuff possible on the back end. Like that's that's where I'm finding a lot of energy and like enjoyment within planning outside of creativity stuff. Well, not only that, that like that client you just described allows you as a financial advisor to be creative, going back to being the plumber of going into the situation, not knowing it's going to be there and having to figure it out and use every tool in your belt. You know, if you're working with a, a, you know, a W2 couple and they have no upward mobility, they can't make more money, they're not creative, like there's not a lot that you can do there. You can't be very creative. There's only a handful mm -hmm. of levers. But if you've got somebody who is trying to build something and they're creative, like there's a lot of different things you can do to structure this plan that allows you to express yourself creatively as a financial advisor, which is where I find myself being more excited as a financial advisor. Um, mm -hmm. We've mentioned, I know we're, we're running out of time. We have to do like another episode where we talk about like, what are you seeing within creator bread? And I don't know, the way I, the way I see things, I've told you this before, I see pursuit and creator bread being connected for the long term. I joke around that one day I would love to just buy creator bread and roll up under pursuit because the way I look at it is pursuit is more of the like the philosophical and figuring out who you are, what makes happier, in, in connecting this relationship and then creator bread helps you once you get there execute these mm -hmm. things not only with the content but you didn't even mention the dashboards that you have to not to manage everything that you give away like there's a lot of good resources that i don't really want to create like i could try to recreate that and brand it as pursuit and have it on me but i'd much rather say hey like here's a great creative company with somebody who's on his pursuit that's building it for you that are a pursuit person that's a creator go check it out so i see us doing things together more often. So we'll go hit back. We'll do another shorter episode about what are you learning from the creators inside Creator Bread to help people on their pursuit. But I want to make yeah. sure we, f we find some time for to talk more about the scholarship or the the, the grant program. Um, you've mentioned it beforehand, but like 
tell us the details of the grant program. What is it? Who's it for? Um, and all that. Yeah. So the idea was kind of just like, like I was mentioning before, just not having the financial ability to like pursue something, whether it just be self-employed or maybe you're already there and you need a couple hundred dollars to get studio time to record the next thing, to be able to send that to someone else to get your next shot, like whatever that may be, like related to your creative journey. Like I want to help provide the funding for that in any way I can. Um, so like the very first grant was um, a young creative, like she's still in college um, and she wants to have a career in TV and film. And growing up, she's just been making like all these non-traditional costumes and stuff for plays and stuff at college. And she has um, a condition where it makes it really difficult to sew by hand. And she's never had a sewing machine or anything like a mannequin to help her like form, form the garment, like put it all together. Um, so she was one of the first people that applied to it. And I talked with her um, and decided to give her the first grant. And it was just $500, no strings attached to go out and buy a sewing machine and a couple mannequin forms. And I just thought like, I think it can be super impactful because like literally anyone can apply to it and anyone can donate to it. Um, and I just know how impactful like any amount of money would have been for me, like when I was getting started, cause I mean, I was doing DoorDash for six months and was putting my rent on credit and hoping I could DoorDash enough the next month to pay it off. And I could have financially prepared better. So I wasn't in that situation, but there's just a lot of things that can come up in life where, not everyone is in a perfect situation where a hundred dollars or a thousand dollars to do something could be life changing for them. And that's really like the only, only purpose and the only goal for it is to get money into the hands of the people that need it. Um, like, I don't know if anyone is familiar with David Perel, but like, I think he's one of the best writers of our generation and he got his shot, like with his rite of passage course and all the stuff that he kind of has built now from a grant program from someone else. Um, and I didn't see that story until I had after, until after I had already started the nonprofit and got everything set up. But then when I saw that, I'm like, okay, there's like actual true tangible stuff that can come from a grant program. Cause like have all these ideas in my head and it's like, if it's struggling or like people aren't even applying when I'm asking, like, if you need money, like, please apply here and no one would do it. I'm like, is this just a stupid idea? Like, am I crazy? Does no one need money? And like saying that out loud sounds crazy, but again, just going back to creative stuff, like when you're alone or just like working on this stuff, you can get like develop these weird like beliefs and stuff in your head that just aren't true whatsoever. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, like we got, got the first grant funded, um, actually it was on December 30th. Um, and then like the only, only two things that we've done right now for fundraising are just like having the fundraiser on the, um, on the creator bread site. And then with the, um, starving artist hoodies and sweatshirts, all that stuff, all the profits go to that. Um, but yeah, like we've got $700 in donations and three, four months, which I think is pretty crazy. Mm -hmm. um, and that's that's kind of where it's at so far. Well, I'd like to see $1,000 more go in. Um, I put this out on Twitter, but this is like as the algo is not reaching as far as it once was. So I'm, I am willing to match up to $500 in donations to the grant program. So all you have to do is make a donation, a screenshot of whatever evidence you have, and like DM me on Twitter um, email me at jc at justincastelli.io. Just let me see that it's there and I'll match that contribution um, to the grant program to get more money flowing in there. Um, Appreciate that. One of the things that I don't know if you've thought about it yet, but the reason I think the, the money is great, but I also think a huge benefit of this grant program is like feeling like somebody believes in you. Like mm -hmm. not only are you giving them money, but you're saying, hey, like I see you as a creator and I see you as somebody who has has a future in doing what it is you're doing, and I want to help you get started. Um, and although you may not directly say that to the person, I've got to imagine that's what part of the feeling is because um, mm -hmm. you know maybe they have family and friends who aren't able or aren't willing to help them, and just to have somebody say, "Hey, like I believe in you enough to give you five hundred dollars, go do it." Like that's a huge vote of confidence, and can like that can be just as game changing for somebody as the $500. So I think that's a really cool byproduct of, of the grant program. 
Yeah, because one thing I always saw, I mean, just even within financial planning is you can only help someone so much. And there comes a time where sometimes the only help that someone needs is more money. Mm -hmm. um, so I wanted to just like create a whole vehicle where I can kind of back up that belief and just kind of allocate money where I think it's best used. Um, and it just truly feels like something that I really just want to focus on and do for the rest of my life mm -hmm. because I've only done it once and it was a great feeling and I can't wait to see like what comes out of it. Mm -hmm. And just as more people get aware of it, more people apply, more people donate, like the more good we can do with it. And I would love like if my career was really just centered around running the grant program, promoting this thing, and then writing and creating content and educating around like money and business for creatives. Mm -hmm. Like that's, that's what I love most right now. And that's kind of where I spend, spend about all my time. Well, speak it into existence, my friend. Uh, all right, final question. We've gone through everything, and I'll have links to everything in the show notes. So links to um, Creator Bread, links to the grant program. You know, Just head over to um, the show notes and, and get those. Um, I've asked you this before on other little episodes we've done, but we'll see if it's changed. You're, you're at a creator conference. You're coming out to be a keynote speaker. Uh, what is the walkout song that you're coming out to? Mm. <clears throat> I think it's, I think it's still got to be three Pete. Okay. Off, off Carter three. Okay. There's, there's just something about that song that, that just puts me, puts me in a different mindset. All right. I dig it. And it's been there since like day one, like back when it came, I mean, I wasn't listening to it in like, oh wait, but mm -hmm. 10, whatever, when I was kind of growing up like junior high, high school, that was, that was it. All right. I dig it. I dig it. And I also don't appreciate you making me feel old talking about being in high school. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. Well, hey, Trayton, I appreciate you taking the time um, to come talk to Creative Process, talk about Creator Bread, the grant program, um, tons of great um, information in this. Uh, if you've made it this long, don't forget, I'll, I prompted you at the beginning of the episode, but go down to the comments and let Trayton know what was one thing out of today's episode that really resonated with you whether it was motivational or something you never thought about before. But I want to use the comment section to give my guests positive feedback from their appearance. Um, as somebody who's been on other podcasts, you never know if you're making an impact because no one takes the time to do it. But like, let Trayton know that something he said resonated with you and kind of inspired you or motivated you. So he knows that you know, the reason we do these things is we want to help people. We want to, you know, you're giving them um, tools and things on Creator Bread, but you also want to inspire people through your words to go do it. Well, mm -hmm. like if you don't know, sometimes it's kind of frustrating. And I think sometimes we lose great people who can inspire us because they don't get any feedback. So let Trayton know what you thought about the episode. Drop it in the comments below. Leave a comment on, on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. Let, let him know how much you loved it. I'll curate those so he can see it. Um, I would really appreciate that. So... With that, Trayton, man, I'll let you go. I appreciate you taking the time. Everybody, thanks for tuning in. Um, you know, it's an honor to be a part of your pursuit, and let's keep on pursuing. <laughs>